Hello, I'm Martin Armstrong. One of the number one questions I get, particularly in these troubling times, is how the computer program I had written back in the 1970s, when I was experimenting with uh, artificial intelligence back then, um, was how did it ever end up forecasting wars and, and civil unrest? Um, to explain that is, I think, important to understand that, number one, I had no intention of creating a model that would do that. I was trying to simply, um, being more of an international investor and, and ultimately an international hedge fund manager, uh, I realized that you had to look at the entire world. Uh, in, uh, in the 1980s, we were dealing with uh, all the people from uh, OPEC, uh, then later on in, in the 80s, it started becoming the Japanese. I, I saw how capital would move from one country to another. Uh, and with it, so would be the talent. Uh, so a lot of the top brokers that were there in Geneva, for example, in the 80s, were suddenly moved over to, to Tokyo uh, when that market peaked in 1989. So, I, I you know, after... Tokyo peaked and everybody said, oh, Southeast Asia, let's go down there. And, and so you see that sort of movement of both money and, and talent. So I basically wrote a program that would uh, try to, to make those judgment calls as I would do. What would I, you know, how to analyze it? What would I look at? And so I basically gave no rules in the sense of, oh, gee, stocks up, uh, interest rates down, or any nonsense like that. Um, so I allowed the, the model to go off and analyze the entire world and come back. And, and actually, it taught me a lot. One of the first uh, major forecasts that it, that it made uh, was in the very early 80s. I remember being on TV with at FNN back then with Walter Bresser. And they had asked me about the British pound. And the, the British pound had been trading around 240, and I said it's going to fall to, to par going into 1985. And they thought that was quite dramatic. And I remember they turned to Walt and said, what do you think of that forecast? And Walt said, I wouldn't bet against his computer. Um, but behind that, the, the computer had said that uh, Britain was going to completely flip and align with um, mainly North America against Europe. And so, I mean, from an economic standpoint, that was quite dramatic. And so... <clears throat> Uh, I had developed uh, a way to communicate with the computer, you know, creating a natural language, having to teach it words and what, what it meant so I could actually have a conversation with it. And so I asked, <clears throat> okay, fine, why are you coming up with this forecast? And it came back and it said, you know, Britain had, with the North Sea oil, had just been discovered in 1977. And within three years, this thing was showing that the entire economy was going to flip. And it did. So um, <clears throat> it was very interesting to see how these things developed. Um, I was then advising a lot of the Japanese uh, companies uh, where to set up. So we, we became largely the... the the biggest inter institutional advisor in the world, primarily because we have been looking at foreign exchange. And uh, back then, I mean, foreign exchange just started, futures just started trading in 1972. And I had a, uh, a client, Walter Zengerly, who was one of the top execs at, at Franklin National Bank, and that was the first bank that went down because of a 7 to 10% move in the Italian lira. Uh, 
And he asked me, he says, you know about this stuff, would you take a look at it? So this is only within you know, a couple of years of the floating exchange rate system even beginning. And so I looked at it and I said, you know, the biggest problem is you have the big um, currency flip here between the Italian lira and the U.S. dollar. So ever since then, I ended up getting called in on just about every currency uh, crisis th that there was, really. Um, even 1985, I was asked uh, when they were forming the G5, uh, I was one of 35 people that basically they went to for foreign exchange. And what they were setting up then was the birth of the G5, which today is G20. Uh, then uh, 87 crash, I became famous for forecasting that because uh, quite honestly, I, you know, I think a, a three-year-old with a pocket calculator could have figured that one out. Uh, it was pretty much that uh, <clears throat> They, they came in and they were talking about, um, you know, lowering the value of the dollar because the dollar had gone up so high in 1985 that you were looking at uh, effectively the British pound felt it to just about par. And so <clears throat> here you go with James Baker at the time. Oh, we're going to manipulate the dollar down. So the U.S. trade deficit would, you know, would improve. And I warned them, I said, you just sold a third of the national debt to Japan and you're going to lower the dollar by 40 percent. They're going to sell. And honestly, a lot of these people in government just have no idea. So they said, oh, why would they sell? I said, because the dollar is going to go down 40 percent. Um, you know, they didn't listen, and I had written a letter to, to President Reagan at the time and warned. I said, hey, this is completely nuts. And uh, so when the 87 crash came, it was basically because of the currency devaluation of the dollar. And foreigners started selling assets. Domestic uh, people were calling the, the brokers and saying, why are they selling? And, and nobody understood the currency. And so the worst thing you, you know, a broker can tell the client is, why is the stock market going down? And he says, I have no idea. Then institutions have to start selling because they don't know if it's going to go down another thousand points the next day. So uh, <clears throat> the, the model I developed would monitor all this stuff and basically tell you what was going to happen and because of currency flows, etc. Then in, in the 1980s, <clears throat> lo and behold, we had a client, uh, one of the major banks in Lebanon. And they had called, and because by this time we were pretty famous in foreign exchange. And so they called and said, look, they found a, a ledger in the basement with the Lebanese pound written down, I think it was like 1850 or something. And could we make a model? I said, sure, send it over, we put it in. And out came, it said, your country's going to fall apart in eight days. I thought there was something wrong with the data. Um, <clears throat> so I called the client and I said, look, there's got to be something wrong here. It says your country's going to fall apart in eight days. And very calmly, they, they said, well, what currency would you recommend? And I thought that was a very strange way to respond. And I said, well, it says the Swiss franc. And eight days later, the Lebanese Civil War began. So. What happened, um, then we had a, a client who was a big shipper uh, in Saudi Arabia. And he called me and said, gee, what do you think gold's going to do tomorrow? Um, <clears throat> uh, Iraq's going to start attacking shipping in the Gulf. And I said, are you telling me a war's going to start tomorrow? Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, what do you think gold's going to do? Um, <clears throat> Even by the time uh, these things were happening, I began to realize that the computer was forecasting wars based upon capital flows. And what became clear was that if someone was going to, to really uh, start a war, they would take action in advance to benefit from it. And 
We've seen this even recently with the 9-11, um, uh, and they were looking for people who started selling, uh, you know, buying puts on airlines before the event. And even with the Hamas uh, attack on Israel recently, I mean, there were trades done in advance there too. Uh, so, uh, in actually in, in uh, 1999, I was doing a conference in London uh, in June, and I stood up and I said, okay, fine, uh, our computer's saying Russia's going to collapse, and I give it about 30 days. Um, and um, sure enough, that was the Russian bond collapse that took down long-term capital management, etc. But uh, unbeknownst to me at the time, uh, the London Financial Times was sitting in the back. And next thing I know, they put it on the front page of the second section and basically said that Armstrong saying that the Russian ruble is going to collapse. Uh, and uh, so when it did, you know, a lot of people got, you know, saying, oh, it wouldn't have done so unless I, you know, because of, of my comments. But because they tend to judge others by themselves. They try to buy influence. So they thought I just had more influence than they did. But it's, it's a model. It's got nothing to do with my personal opinion. In order to, for a computer, for a real AI system and <clears throat> to work, it has to be able to have a database. Uh, and <clears throat> so I recreated from the actual coinage of the Roman Empire uh, to answer a very critical question. We all know that Rome fell, but how fast did it fall? So <clears throat> by putting together all the, the coinage and testing it, uh, it came up and it showed that here's the silver uh, denarius. It fell in just eight years. So <clears throat> here's a more detailed chart of that period. And you can see that it falls from over 80% to virtually nothing. Uh, so that shows you how fast something can fall. And because of that database, uh, our computer was able to forecast the collapse of, of communism and even the collapse of Russia, um, and which caused the long-term capital management crisis. And, and, um, <clears throat> at that point in time. So all these things are, are significant. I mean, here's even uh, how the Byzantine Empire collapsed. Uh, you, we can track these things from the coinage. Uh, and <clears throat> so that's very important. And pu putting together all this uh, database, uh, we, we find, for example, uh, climate change has, has created the major movements, for example, the Huns and, and the Mongols and the Goths invaded uh, Western Europe uh, because of droughts and climate change over there in their regions. Uh, we have also uh, the fall of, of the Bronze Age, and that was all you know, basically generated by the fact that we had um, the Sea People, which they, the Egyptians called, and they were from the north. So they invaded and, and overthrew just about every civilization except for the Egyptians. So all these things are <clears throat> important and, and it allows the computer to see the timing and what sets things in motion. So um, <clears throat> by putting in all the civil unrest um, that has taken place and, and how big they were, uh, like we saw back in the 1960s with the civil rights uh, riots, etc. Uh, all that data comes together and has been able to forecast. <clears throat> we put these out for the last several years. I mean, it's just, it showed 2023 was going to be the start of civil unrest. And when it came to, <clears throat> to war, our computer there was also showing the same thing that was going to start turning up dramatically in 2023. Uh, and this is not 
going to really come to a conclusion <clears throat> until we probably get to at least 2027. And uh, <clears throat> these things are not, you know, made up, you know, with hindsight. Um, <clears throat> here's a model. The, one of the frequencies that we have found has been published, we published it back in, in the late 1970s. Um, it is the uh, effective, you know, 51.6 years, uh, which is six waves of these 8.6 years of business cycle. And from starting even from the Cuban Missile Crisis, that basically came over here and it, it projected exactly the end here, you have 2014. That lined up uh, quite well with basically, you can look at our, I did a conference in 2011 and put up this chart and I showed that the war cycle was turning up in 2014 and that became the Ukrainian revolution. So all these things take place. I mean, when the economy goes down, people will respond and they always respond in the same way. It's got nothing to do with the technology that people think that, uh, oh, they were running around uh, with swords and, and wearing sheets back then. So what, you know, how is that important today? Uh, well, you know, just look at Star Wars and they just, it's the same thing. They took the, uh, the, the Roman Revolution, instead of swords, they turned them into lightsabers, uh, and it's the Republic fighting against the Emperor. I mean, it's, so it's always the same story. So when we look at the 2024 election, the computer is already showing that neither side is going to accept the result. And we can see here, after 24, uh, we're looking at the computers projecting two sharp increases um, going into civil unrest for 2026. So we have a tremendous amount of data and the computer's objective, it's looking at this, it's not political, it's, it's very unbiased. And in that respect, we're looking at um, this computer has been uh, quite phenomenal in its forecasts. Uh, and I've been using it for over 40 years. And so I just wanted to do this session to show you what is really coming and so you understand. We're looking at international war, uh, which will probably peak around 27. And we can see from everything that is going on, these uh, what we call the neocons are trying to start wars on every possible front. So. Hopefully this explains a lot of the questions. And at that point in time, um, I'll be glad to revisit this issue, uh, perhaps after the 2024 election.